This video will demo setting up and configuring your encoder with the data acquisition motor control system. So what I've got here is a motor with a knob attached to the shaft and then on the back end of the motor we've got our encoder. We're not actually going to turn on and power our motor, we're just going to use the knob attached to change the value of our encoder. So the encoder is wired up here to our counter zero of the USB 6211 and we've wired up encoder channels A, B, and Z here and then we're powering the encoder with a 5 volt and the ground reference from the USB device. Now the encoder I have is actually a differential quadrature encoder. Uh, we're only connecting it with uh, the single-ended uh, channels. Uh, it'll work just the same so if you have differential or single-ended and you're using the USB device, this is how you want to do it. So go ahead and start programming within LabVIEW. First thing I want to do is read from that counter on my USB device. So I'm going to right click and pull up a DAC assistant. So I'm acquiring a signal. It's a counter input. I want to read the position and it's an angular position. So as I said, we've got it connected here to counter zero. Click finish and there's just a few more things to configure. So first thing, uh, every encoder has the specification of pulses per revolution. So how many pulses does your encoder output per one full revolution? For mine it's 512. And then since I've connected my Z channel from the encoder, I want to actually enable it on the software side and for my setup the phase needs to be set to A high and B low. And finally we just want to leave the acquisition mode as is, one sample on demand, and that works just fine. So we'll test this and the measure value up here is going to be the angle in degrees uh, of my knob. So we'll hit run and I know it's kinda hard to see but I've got numbers on my knob going from uh, 1 to 12 just like a clock face so if it's pointing straight up at 12 o'clock one full revolution we expect to see 360 degrees so if I'm going on the other hand from 12 to 3 o'clock that's only a 90 degrees um, change, in, uh, change in position so right now it's pointing to 12 o'clock so if I turn that and go all the way to uh, 3 o'clock you can see that that's about 90 degrees and then if I go from 3 o'clock to 6 that's close to 180 degrees and then if we go all the way back to 12 o'clock we get 360. So that looks like it's working. We'll click stop, click OK so it's going to ask us if we want to put it in a loop and we do, we want to keep reading this value uh, continually so we'll say yes and we want to put a little bit of a delay in here so I'll just put down await ms and we'll make that a hundred millisecond delay so we want to actually output this value to my front panel so I'm going to create a numeric indicator and go to my front panel so this value is our angular position and it's in degrees. We'll make this larger so it's easier to see. And then we're just going to change the formatting so that it makes a little bit more sense when we run the VI. So we'll change the floating point with one digit of precision. So now we're ready to run it. So if I run my VI right now I haven't changed uh, the position of my shaft so the encoder should still say zero degrees but right now it's pointing up at 12 o'clock but if I turn it to 3 o'clock you'll see we get 90 degrees. If I turn it again to 6 o'clock we get 180 
And if I turn it again, as you can imagine, we get 270, and then back to 12 o'clock, we get 360.